Welcome back to another tutorial. So in today's tutorial, we are going to implement the melee units. So that would be like zombies, hellhounds, what are other types of monsters, could an evil dead, Dracula, underlord type, boss spawn. That's, I guess. That's sort of count as melee. Any case. So as with the projectiles, first we have to start with the um class so we say melee monster dot hx so it will also be a, a, a sprite no clue why i showed to say sprite extends flx sprite new x float y float no, 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 no. Okay. And then super X and Y. Cool. And now just to import. That was a fail. I guess. Uh, now to import sprite. Import. Awesomeness. Now. Before we start thinking about how to implement things, we also need to think about how we would go about stick, um, dictating how much damage both us as a player does to the monster, as well as the amount of armor the monster has, the amount of health that a monster has, the amount of damage the monster can do to us, the movement speed of the monster because it's a melee monster it will come at us the whole time shooting well not shooting at us by trying to get to on to us attack us things like that so let's start off with the dps so var damage per second of type float private so the amount of armor the monster has armor float the monster's movement speed now you will notice that this time i'm not making this a, a static inline variable because i don't want every monster to move the same like maybe some of the zombies move slower than other zombies, the hellhounds move a lot faster, the bats move faster, the orcs or whatever we first decide to add, maybe skeletons. They all have different movement speed and I want this class to be like an, a class that can be used by all melee monsters. So we just end up changing the value of the armor, the movement, things like that. And also the sprite and its animations, everything else pretty much has to stay the same. The monster has to come to the player and has to do damage to the player depending on a formula created using the armor and damage and things like that. So, private var and then the target. And rather than the point this time, let's go with an object. So an object can be a sprite, it can be an object, it can be a few other things. As long as it, like you can say it's a sprite, it's a text, and a few other things. So we specifically just use object rather than sprite. We just say object, and an object has a position as well. So now that we have that, we also need to pass the target. For now, we will oh yeah wait before i do that i'm doing a horrible job at following programming rules underscores always have to use underscores for private okay target of type flx object cool so this dot help equals 20 mm, excuse me so the uh, sprite has a uh, health 
So I, you can't like override health. You just have to change the variable. And if we're storing health percentage or armor points or whatever, although in this case we're storing health with uh, armor points on something else. So this, god damn it. I can probably just go. Let's see if I can do this. Got it accepted. Awesome. So damage per second equals, let's start with five. This isn't really necessary since we won't implement the damage to this video just yet and probably not in a few videos. So armor equals 10. Movement speed equals random dot integer and 10 and 100. And now you might notice that we don't like if I save, it doesn't know what random is. So random is a, a third party package that we have to import. And to do that, you would go to your project.xml and then you would go down to libraries and you would say axlib uh, name equals random let me just move this one down but oh that was a fail And also to use this, you would have to say axlib install random by spot. So you have to specifically install it underneath your hacks packages. You have to install random as a package so that you can use it inside your game. Now, if you do that and you exit out here, you will, let me just, you're going to pick it up. Oh, it's refreshing. Let me just pause and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, cool. So it just needed to update the cache. with enough how long it takes, but now you will notice that you have um, full access to random. So what this does is it creates a random integer between 10 and 100, both inclusive. So it'll go up to 100 rather than stopping at 99. With that out of the way, we next have to go on to adding the target, which is easy. So you just say target equals target. And we also want to add a graphic just for testing purposes. Later on, like I said, with the, um, the projectile, we'll add uh, the actual like sprite to it, the animation for it, and everything like that. But I'm a programmer first, not a game well, not an art type person i suck at it and i've been holding out on it so for now program art all the way but and we'll just use a zombie as an example i'll have to import this quick fix import thank you cool now that's done we can also override the update function awesomeness now we want to add an ai function to this which will get called every frame of our game so that the monster knows what to do we'll just start with a private function ai and then it's of type void now we could have gone and done something like we could have just added all the um, logic inside the update function since it's currently not a lot but i prefer just keeping it clean in function so that you can later on go and change every function rather than going inside another function having to find like the part that does the um, ai and then updating it inside the update you can just change it inside this function and it's nicely packed it's nicely kept together and organized now we want to use the velocity class and we want the monster to move towards an object so we say this monster 
and being target and being planet and then the speed at which we want to move is movement speed awesomeness ah okay that's why i didn't do it in my so in my um notes i did it using a point so let's rather do a point so this sprite and then the target dot position get position and then finally the movement speed awesomeness so this says move towards this point which is the target and get the target's position and then move at this speed awesomeness now before I make the same mistake like I did in the previous tutorial where I forgot to actually call it, let's just say AI and make sure that it's called every update, every um, frame per second, every frame. Making videos is harder than you might think. Like the amount of talking you have to do, my voice gets so groggy. Any guess? Play step. So next we want to have a group of monsters or a group to hold all our monsters. So monsters of type FLX typed group. And we'll say it's a melee monster. So after we added the player, next we want to add the monster. So monsters equals new. Uh, FLX type group uh, melee monsters and then add it. So now all the so now we added the, all the monsters, but you will notice that we didn't add any monsters to this group just yet. Currently the group is empty, so if we just run it now, we won't see anything drawn on the screen because there isn't anything inside it just yet. So now we want to add a few monsters just for testing purposes. Later we'll use a uh, uh, the I forgot the the editor's name, but we'll use a, a map editor to create a map, add the entities onto that map, and then when we load the map, we'll add the entities then rather than just spawning them randomly. But same as with the art, it's all just for programming benefits for now. So we'll start off with a for loop for um because we don't really care about. Uh, the variable so we just say for nothing in 0 to 100 because we just want to loop 100 times we don't really care for the variable that gets looped over so monsters dot add a new melee monster at So we start off by saying we want to add a melee monster and we just want to spawn it anywhere on the map between um, 0 and 1000 on both X and Y and then finally we want to add the target which would just be the player. Awesomeness. That should work. Okay, let's see. Let's try and see if we have a horde of zombies chasing our poor little player through the map. Wait for it. Almost there. Wait for it. Here we go. Ah, nice. Zombie apocalypse. Now you'll notice that some of the zombies move slower than the other ones because we randomly generated them. And every frame, they 
like set um, their target to where the player currently is. So they will follow us until, well, let's see. So they'll just um, like move on to our top left corner. And you can see them slightly jiggling. I don't know if it will be viewable on the recording, but you can see them slightly move in and out onto one spot. That is because they're not exactly on our point. They're moving like one pixel between one and two pixels from our point. And then we can create a nice tentacle. Look at that beautiful zombie tentacle. Any case, thank you for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like and a subscribe would help this channel a lot since it's a new channel and we desperately need both likes and subscribes. Also, um, my Twitter should be down in the um, description. Please come and follow me. And if you want to message me, by all means, I'll be open to messaging you. Thank you and enjoy your day.